On this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, I'm posted up in Oshawa, Ontario. A lot of great boxing fun going on today. Talking to one of the pugilists on the card today. Why don't you introduce yourself to the listeners there, man? Hi there, everybody. My name's Jeff Lane. Uh, excited to be here and excited to be on the card today. Yeah, and how did this all come about? I understand you haven't been training for like relatively as long as maybe some of your compatriots. Like, what uh, led to you know you being here today and competing and everything? Uh, well, I've always been in love with the sport of boxing. It's a it's a great physical activity, great way to keep in shape. It's um, and and highly competitive and challenging. So I started at our club maybe a year and a half ago, and um, I use the analogy of like uh, preparing for a you know running and then deciding to run a marathon you know as like a way to challenge yourself so I looked at that same way for boxing I trained for a period of time and then said I'm gonna have a fight I'm 41 years old so I don't know how many fights I'm gonna have but I'm on the card today and I'm looking forward to uh, going in and seeing what happens that's awesome man so when did you start checking out boxing like do you remember like a distinct fight or fighter or anything like that or was it just something you, you've always like you remember watching kind of thing so I'm a huge Oscar De La Hoya fan. I always loved Oscar De La Hoya, great fighter. I watched him when he was an Olympian. I watched him when he came up through the ranks and increasing his weight and success and titles over time. So I always loved De La Hoya. I used to watch all the pay-per-views, um, you know, Tyson, Holyfield. Like I loved all the big heavyweights back when I was younger. And again, I'm 41, so a lot of those guys I saw, so they would kind of come and go. And um, But then I really wanted to take up the sport when I moved out this way a few years back and then joined a gym. Motor City Boxing is my club. And I really got into the sport. Great coaches and, like I said, great physical activity, great way to exercise and really to challenge yourself. And it's cool that you're actualizing something to reality that presumably you've wanted to do for a while or at least you've entertained trying out, right? Totally, yeah. It's like a bucket list kind of thing. So uh, I said, you know, I want to have one fight. I wanted to have it before I turned 40. Uh, I missed it by a year. But even when I checked in today, like talking to the officials and they looked at my age and the year I was born and said, oh, you're you're 31 years old. Good for you. And I said, no, I'm 41, man. Add a decade to that. <laughs> so, so they said, oh, even better. So it's, uh, you know, regardless of age, just the number, uh, I'm here to do the best I can and go in and, uh, and have fun, try to enjoy the moment. And who are some of your regular sparring partners that you were putting in that work with ahead of this bout here? So a bunch of the guys actually on the card today are guys that I would spar with. Um, so uh, Craig, Craig Wilson's in today. Um, the guy I'm fighting is actually at from, uh, from my gym. We've been in the ring sparring a couple times, not too much though. Um, Roy Wilson is on the card. Sorry. Yeah, Craig and Roy Wilson. Um, unrelated but same last name they're uh, both on the card I spent a lot around sparring with them and you'll see Rory come out he's uh, around the same height as me about six pounds eight pounds less than me Craig's about six inches taller and weighs about 20 pounds more so you get a real variance but guys are just there to try to you know get experience to, to work get in some technical aspects of it and then train for days like today so I know a lot of the guys are friends of mine the coaches the whole crew there is great even the guys from the other clubs like it's a really um, people have sort of a different view of boxing because they see that people fight and hit each other and they see highlights on TV, but the clubs are all trying to just get better and do the best we can. Yeah, I think there's a real camaraderie amongst the fighters that maybe doesn't get captured all the time in the way sometimes boxing is presented, but that's one of the things that really draws me to it. Yeah, totally. People, it's hard to see that unless you're close to it like you are. So you actually see it, you come in, you meet the guys, you meet the coaches, and you see that there is that camaraderie that exists between the clubs. So it is it is really cool. Something that I didn't even know myself when I joined the club, and uh, I started to see that over time, which has been really great. And was there any part of the process that was kind of, uh, I guess, like not like you expect? Like I noticed you're going to be fighting a junior middleweight. Like was it an easy cut? Like was there anything that, you know, seemed like out of sorts where you're just like, oh, I didn't necessarily expect this. Not, not necessarily in a negative way, but kind of like, oh, this sort of popped up and I didn't necessarily expect this. Well, the, the biggest thing for me was actually you know, finding the opponent for the fight. So I'm a, I'm a bit of a unicorn in that I'm 41 years old, I'm around 150 pounds, um, and I've got zero fights. So most guys my age don't weigh what I weigh, and they don't have my experience in boxing either, <laughs> so, or lack thereof. So it was a bit of a challenge to find someone for me to fight from another club, hence why we decided to have me go against someone from my own club, which, which isn't um, uh, that uncommon of an occurrence. A lot of clubs, they'll just say, okay, you guys are going to match up because you match up well. Um, it's getting that first fight in that's usually the hardest thing to do because there's a real difference between zero fights and two fights just that first time that you get in the ring. So that was probably the hardest thing is just having an opponent, even though it's not like pro or even advanced amateurs where you can research your opponent and do all kinds of you look at film footage like that, that doesn't exist right so but it's more the case of just mentally preparing that okay having an opponent is taken care of because I've got a whole bunch of people 30 or so people that are coming here to cheer me on today which is awesome friends family co-workers and uh, knowing that I didn't have an opponent for the last few weeks was a bit of a challenge so when we finally landed on the guy that I'm going to be going in against today 
I can put that to rest and then just focus on getting ready for today, which has really been what my focus has been the last six to eight months when I've been training real hard. And that's another kind of curious facet about boxing too. Sometimes like the matchmaking opportunities aren't like as readily available there. So it almost creates that camaraderie with the opponent almost. Like it's like, oh, cool, man. It's cool. We get to go out there and showcase our skills now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You kind of, as best you can, right? You want to leave that stuff to the people who, that's what they specialize in. They set up the matches and you just try as hard as you can to be as best prepared as you can. And they'll line up your weight. They'll line up your experience. They'll take care of everything else. Um, and you just go in and just do your thing. So it allows you to just focus on what you can control essentially and then the other guys will take care of the rest. But you, you build a lot of um, uh, camaraderie with the coaching staff as well because they're doing their part to try to represent you and represent the club. They want to make sure there's fair matches that are out there. And, uh, you know, there's no there's no guarantees of victory for anybody. My um, You know, for my club, I know some of the guys who even went pro said my first three fights I was 0-3, and they kept on going. So it's not about a W necessarily. It's about getting in that ring and doing everything you can. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm curious if there's anything you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping things up here. I appreciate the time. Uh, just thanks for taking the time, the interest in the sport. Um, I'm really excited to be here, and I hope I can uh, impress all the people who have come out here to watch me do my thing. I think it's going to be a great uh, evening of boxing in, in Oshawa. I think it's going to be a fun time, man. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, getting a little post-fight action here. I'm talking to Jeff and, you know, getting a big victory there and everything like that. How are you feeling with everything, man? You must be on cloud nine, right? I feel really good. I feel really good. It was a, um, a lot of hard work to get here, a lot of training, a lot of hours, a lot of sparring, um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Sounds like a lot of cliches, but it, it really was. So it was a good guy I had today, good fight, and, um, yeah, I feel really good. I feel like a million bucks. Was it one of those things where it just clicked right when you got in there and you kind of got in that flow state? Was there some kind of adjustment period? Like, how did that sort of go? I don't think the flow started until I started to get hit, and then it all just kind of kicked in. There's a lot of nerves. I had a lot of friends and family that were kind enough to show up today, and um, they came in to support me and cheer me on. And it was only when I uh, first got hit that I realized what I had to do. And it just kind of all kicked in, the training, the instincts, the conditioning took over, um, and my, st- my shots just started to land. Did he crack you decently, or was it more so just like the fact that he'd hit you? Like It wasn't anything that rocked you per se. It was just like, you know you're in a fight kind of thing. It was, I mean, it was a good shot. It was a good shot. It's hard to say, um, you know, how hard it was. It, it, it felt, it was a wake-up call for me. It wasn't, you know, I didn't feel like I was going to go down, but um, I knew I had to hit back, and I knew I had to hit back hard. So it just kind of got me, snapped me into the fight, and I know I had to go to work. And did you get a sense the fight was going to be wrapping up right around it did because you were really ramping up that volume there and then, you know, the ref interjected and everything like that. So did you get that sense that, you know, the end was near, so to say? Yeah, I thought that I could I could take him out after I um, got that standing eight count that I could go in, I could finish him off. Um, they needed a bit more time with the ref in his mouthpiece, um, so I thought that might give him a bit more time to recover, but I knew how tired I was. I knew the kind of condition I was in, and I thought if, I, you know, if, I'm, if I'm feeling gassed and getting there, then he's going to be really tired and I can go and finish this thing off. Awesome. So, like, what's the feeling? Does it feel like, I guess, what your preconceived notion of it would be? Like, is it an altogether different sensation? Like, how would you categorize that, I guess? It's, uh... I, you know, it's, it's a funny thing because um, I didn't want to think too much about what it would feel like because I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to train as hard as I could to do the best I could today and then just to see what happens. So um, it, it feels better than I could have even imagined or even let myself imagine leading up to it. Um, he was a great guy. You know, he, um, he took the fight on pretty short notice. He signed up early and then we didn't have a match. And so he agreed to fight me just recently. So um, he stepped up, made a fight of it. I had a lot of friends and family, like I said, show up and uh, cheer me on. So it's been a really, uh, been a really fun day. Yeah, that must have really galvanized your spirit. I mean, you seem very enthusiastic to get in there anyway, but having like so many people cheering you on it must be a great feeling too. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing with boxing. You know, a lot of people are really interested in the sport when you tell them either it's at work or around family functions. Like I'm not a... I'm not a, you know, a fighter kind of guy, you would say. Like, I sit at a desk all day for my job, and so kind of uh, white-collar boxing. You know, I just love the sport, like I was telling you when we spoke earlier. I just love the sport. I've always loved it, and I love the training. I love the intensity of it and the challenge of it. And so when people found out that I box, they got really interested. And then they found out that I was going to do a fight. They got really interested and said, I want to go when the fight happens. I want to go when the fight happens. The next thing I know, I got 30 people coming here to cheer me on. So uh, I really didn't want to let them down, but more than anything, I wanted for myself just to do as well as I could getting in there. So I, I feel about that absolutely it was a great performance too what are the plans for the rest of the day they like any celebration going on anything like that well it's been a month without any booze <laughs> so uh <laughs> so i'm gonna be having some booze <laughs> and then uh the basketball games tonight i'm a big basketball fan so i'm just gonna enjoy the rest of the day spend some time with my family hug my kids kiss my wife and just uh enjoy life enjoy the day that's awesome man i really appreciate the time thanks so much okay thanks a lot Dylan. appreciate it